<laughs> oh, it's 7.01. Okay, should we just shut the doors there and... Okay. Yes, you Yes, you create la la ka la la ka to the kubao kureta. Yes, you create la la kure si erio to abakuriti rio kureti. Ya ba kure li le kyoko si okota. Yes, you kota ka tio koti rio kure. Ario ko la la kio wo la 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 kia la la kia si okoti ti deke ti deke ti deke. Father God, I ask you for your wisdom. I ask for your revelation. I ask for the eyes of my understanding to be open, to be enlightened, so that we will know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of your glory, what is our inheritance as your saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe, according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead, when you seated him at your own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers, and might in every name that is named. Father God, you put all things under our, our feet. You've given Jesus to be our head. And I thank you for that. And I decree and declare that if you took our skin back, you would see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in each and every one of us that are born again. And we thank you because the line of Judah is in us and it's roaring. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Satan, we put you on notice right now. You are bound from operating against us in any way, shape, or form in Jesus' name. We have the authority. You do not. We do. We have the victory, and you've been conquered, Satan, in Jesus' name. Do you agree? Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Welcome. You may be seated. Oh. I just want to pray in the spirit. I just want to be there. Now, what we're going to do, now you've been listening to some good, good stuff on Sunday mornings and Wednesday night, and thank you so much, Didi, for sharing. I super, super appreciate that. We were, last week about this time, we were getting dosed again in it, and, and uh, wow, it was really good. It was super tremendous. I just have no other word for it. Because you saw, when you see Kenneth Copeland and you see Richard Roberts getting drunk in the spirit, you're having fun. <laughs> we had so much fun. And I told you this, I think, a little bit on Sunday, but every time uh, um, Kenneth Copeland would come near to, or to, to, um, to Richard Roberts, he, was, he finally had a sit down on the chair like this if you can see me and every time he'd come near him he'd have to scoot away and he'd just scoot away like this because he couldn't stand up so the spirit was moving and I just praise God because again we get like the fifth row from the front and it's closer than this here the chairs don't seem that they're closer together because you got a jam there was about 3,000 people there and they had to turn people away but to see the spirit moving, Billy Brim, she at, mm, she actually took and she kicking her leg up like Billy Brim. She's in her 80s. She just having her uh, dancing all over the place. Kenneth was dancing all over the place. Uh, of course, me, I stood real still. Now I wanna, <laughs> oh, you, if you don't get excited like that, that's that's what um, Kenneth Copeland he said. Your wood has to be wet. <laughs> So getting the Spirit of God moving is always good. And it was good. So let's start putting things together of what we're learning. Because you want to take the Word of God and you want to go from glory to glory, right? Faith to faith, so to speak. So what we're going to do is um, we, we are called ambassadors for Christ. Now, I didn't know this until I started looking it up some time ago. But when you're an ambassador and you're in another country, you don't pay for nothing. They give you a place to live. 
you're treated with honor and respect and you have servants and so on. That didn't happen in Benghazi, but I tell you, they're not going to do that to us again. Got it? Because that is going to come out exactly what happened because I decreed and declared, because if one of those were my son, I would want the people who did that in prison. But Pastor Jan, that isn't forgiveness. Oh, yes, it is, but you got to pay for the price. Got it? They belong in prison. I don't care who it is. So if it was you and I, we'd be in prison, wouldn't we? Are the rules right across the board? Absolutely. But now we are ambassadors for Christ, so now we want to stir ourselves up in the Lord. It didn't, we, we don't say, Lord, stir us up. We say, we stir ourselves up. So now what we're going to do is bring up 2 Timothy 1, and they're going to put that on the overhead. And it says in here, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by putting on of my hands. We can be stirred up, okay, by like when, when uh, Paul laid his hands on Timothy. Or we, somebody lays our hand, their hands on us or we lay hands on other people, we can stir people up. We can stir people up with the word of God, just speaking the word of God over them. Like myself, I got stirred up being there. Pastor Kenny and I got stirred up because you hear new words, not new words, I shouldn't say it that way. We, we've, we've heard so many things that we've been listening from Dr. Winston, from uh, what's been going on here for a long time, and we are really, really blessed, and we are definitely a fire here. And this thing is going to get into the oats field and just spread. You've never seen a fire in an oats field. Maybe, maybe you did, but I surely did. Whew, that thing goes fast. But what is he saying here? What else here? He said, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And also self-discipline is in there too. All right, in the Amplified. For be, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. Now, this is Paul, right? Yes. But be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Are there going to be afflictions? Do, is there going to be trouble? Yes, because God says, he said, cast your care on him because he cares for you, right? And then who goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour? So you're definitely going to have a fight, but God says fight the good fight of faith. Is that true in Timothy? How do you fight the good fight of faith? With the word of God. You cannot fight it with your hands like little Cordell when he was younger. Grandma, I just want to beat him up. And he's swinging and everything, and his little body's going. And I said, no, you don't do that in the spirit realm. You do it with your words. What do I say to him? So, yeah, and we can teach our children that. Verse 9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So now we know before the world before this world existed, God already had us on his mind. He already, he already gave you your talents. He gave you everything you have need of before you were even born. Then in Revelations 21, 5, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Did he make all things new? Okay, now, what is that talking about? And we're, we're going to go into that in just a little bit, okay, when we go into Proverbs 10, but we'll finish this. Um, and he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So now we know that we have the written word. They, John did not have the written word. He was writing it with his tongue in Psalms 45.1, the tongue of an ever-ready ever pen. So whatever you say, you are writing your future or your children's future or your husband's or your neighbor's or this church through your tongue, okay? Keith Moore spoke to us, okay? He was the, oh yeah, all the biggies are there. That's just wonderful. And he talked about lying. And he talked about lying and how it, it stops the blessings. You put a million dollars in, you know, into an offering, you lie and it stops you. 
No, oh, boom. It's, it's some pretty serious stuff. We'll have to see if we get an opportunity to play that soon. It was very good. But he, he brought it along so good because every one of us lie one time or another. Come on. Right? Yeah, sure. So, but Ephesians, um, Ephesians 1, chapter 3. Go to that, please. I didn't put that. Did I put it? Yeah, I did. So he said in Ephesians 1, he said, let's read that together. And this, this, what did I put it in the King message? This is the message Bible. Let's read it. How blessed is God and what a blessing he is. He's the father of our master, Jesus Christ, and takes us to the high places of blessing in him. Now, where are you seated? We're, we're in those high places and we're seated in him. Long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind, had settled on us as the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to do what? Adopt. He adopted us into his family through Jesus Christ. And how? It, what's the only way you can get into heaven? Jesus, come into my heart. That's the only way you can get into heaven. Now, Ofer Winfrey said there's other ways, but she's totally wrong. Okay? There, there are people with the evolution. They're totally wrong. They're off the wall. This didn't go, Psh! there is a creator. This didn't start from nothing. This started from God, from nothing. Right? And uh, we'll have to play that sometime on evolution. It's just a really good video. It, it, it'll answer a lot of questions for you. So he says, we're adopted us onto his family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he took in planning this. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of his what? Lavished gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. Now you have, you have around 8,000 gifts in here. 8,000 gifts, promises that belong to you. So now um, God wants to show off his glory. That's what God is doing through us. He wants to show off his glory to us. Through us, I'm sorry, through us. Because people are, today are looking so feverishly for something. They really are. You have got it inside of you. And once you realize what you have inside of you and that you can give that away, like praying for that little boy in the airport, I know he has some kind of a disease, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that if I could just touch his head and get his, his mama's approval, and I got it, and when I touched his little head, I said, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. And that little head looked up. And the mama didn't lose track of nothing. Right? I know that boy is healed. Just a little bitty guy, little bit. It just amazed me, little short legs with that big body. It's changed. I'm going to see that boy in heaven. Wow. God is so good. So God wants to show off his glory through us. How, he, how, he, how blessed is our God that he would want people to see him through us, to use us that way. I think it's awesome. Now, Proverbs 10, 7. This, this is awesome. Look what it says. The, the memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall what? Now, what is this really talking about? What, what is this really, really talking about? Does this mean people that are getting Alzheimer's or something like that? No, you know what this is really talking about? It's talking about when you know what hits you, I'll call it shelf, but you know what I'm talking about. When that hits you, you're going to do what? Bring that back up. You're going to have the memory because you are the just and you are blessed. You're going to have the remember and the memory huh, to speak the word in that situation because you don't know what else to pray. Is there feelings in faith? Say no. No, no, there's no feelings. But if the devil can get us into feelings, he's got it. 
I used to be more touchy-feely, and I'd cry. You know, now if I watch Bambi, I'd say, oh, well, I'm just an animal. I don't cry at things like I used to because um, I, I, had to, I had to face those things and not let my emotions. I remember saying, saying Rita Witness' funeral and being such a close friend, and, and the Lord had told me, I don't want you crying. And I was like, I know, I'm not going to. I'll keep from it. But I, I didn't. I just made it right through. I made it right through. I made it right through. Why? Because God told me I couldn't do it. Can I cry other times? You better believe I can cry other times. But he'll tell you, I need you to be strong for people to watch you. Right? That's like if you see an accident or something and you go up there and you see blood all over. Don't start freaking out. You just be, you start saying, I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You get in, you say, can I pray for them? Yes. You just say, I'm a minister of the word of God. Because you are. You're not a pastor, but you're a minister. I can minister prayer to them. I tell you to rise up and be healed now in Jesus' name. You're a minister of the word of God. Take your authority. When you're finished, say amen, have a good day, and walk away. Got it? Yeah, why not? So, the memory of the just is blessed. The memory of knowing what to do when you know what hits the fan. Right? All right. Remember, okay, remember that you have tithers' rights no matter what happens. I heard that um, from Kenneth Copeland. Bill Winston said it there. There was... There was somebody else, I can't remember offhand now, that said it, that they had something happen. It was a debt, a large debt, and they said, I have tithers' rights. And within that week, the debt was gone. They don't know how, even how it happened. And another one was tithers' rights with a very sick, um, that wasn't a child, it was a uh, a parent or something. They just cried out, tithers' rights. Just like we were teaching here, we have tithers' rights. What does that do? That tells the Satan. What is that telling Satan? What does it say that, that your tithes and offerings will do? It will rebuke the devourer. the devourer. So if your kid falls down dead, you say, I got tithers' rights, you get your butt back up here in Jesus' name. Tithers mean God's got to come right there. He's got to get the devourer off, get the devil off, and he's got to raise that kid up. At work, they're giving you a hard time. You go, I got tithers rights. In your family, they're giving you a rough time. You say, I got tithers rights. What does that mean? What does that mean again? What does that mean to have tithers rights? Somebody tell me. Then God's got to come and rebuke the devourer. That's exactly what you're saying to him. Get over here. You've got to rebuke the devourer. Isn't that sweet? See, we don't have to get in touchy-feely. You don't have to get, I got tithers' rights. You're semi. You got tithers' rights. Whatever's wrong, hmm? God's got to make it turn out right. He overturns rules, regulations, and laws on our behalf. That's what tithers' rights are. Do you have to remember to say that all? No. You just remember to say, I got tithers rights. That means Satan, I rebuke you. You got to put back. You got to restore sevenfold. See why it's so exciting? Now, you tell me again real quick. Um, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for those who don't tithe. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for those who tithe a little bit. Who is the wealth of the wicked laid up for? I'm going to add one more thing the one that is a joyful giver. you got to be a joyful giver. Lord, i got a got $100 right here. I'm going to pay my tithe, and I'm going to give an extra dollar, $2, five. Man, I'm going to throw the whole thing in. Oh, Jan, you're looking for blessings, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Use that against the devil. I have tithers, right? Got it? 
You want your kids to come in order? You're, if your kid, is, your kid is naughty, sow more into him. And then say, tither's rights. Tither's rights. Got it? Got a grandkid? Got a grandkid? Tither's rights. You know what? God says he'll do you a favor. If you want to pray for a family member, you pray for them and you say, Father, would you do me this favor? And he'll say, thank you, because you have favor. And if they don't even have to be born again. And you just say, tithers rights. That just called on God to say, you got to rebuke the devourer for my sake. You got to take his lousy hands off. You have to make him return sevenfold. <laughs> Doesn't that feel good? Doesn't that feel good to think and know what you have? Oh, for people who love money more than God and are so close with their money, that's so scary because God's going to say you're not giving enough love, but you guys, not you guys, you love to give. You love to bless him because you've seen what comes back. All of a sudden, money doesn't mean to you what it used to, is it? So what does God want us to be? God wants us to be his mouthpiece and his hands and his feet. Think about this. What is your greatest concern? I'm not saying fear. What's your greatest? Just think on this once. We're going to do this once, okay? What is your greatest concern? What is your greatest concern? Think on that. You take that concern and you say, Father, I give this to you. And I thank you for taking it. I got tithers rights over that. <laughs> <laughs> and you watch things turn around. Why do you think Oral Roberts had Evelyn go and take 10000 out of, that's all they had in their savings, take it. They're ready to do the surgery on his heart, and they said, you got a brand new heart. How can that happen? How can that happen? Because he says, I got tithers rights, but also offerings. That's above and beyond that's favor. He got a brand new heart. He didn't get no replacement. He didn't just get it okay. And one time he had to, and I was telling you a little bit about that, about his appendix. They, were, they, they could see they were inflamed and there was problems with it. And as they're taking pictures, he's like, stop. Now Richard was telling us about that, stop. And he started telling who he was to the enemy because he's a tither. And they're watching this on the screen, and the thing went back into shape. They watched it. They had a little camera, so they take those. They showed it to him, to Richard. Is that amazing? You know, there's sicknesses and diseases. Somebody, uh, I, I met with this one person I witnessed to yesterday, and he said he's got some kind of a stomach disease. I never heard of it. I don't know if the guy even knew how to spell it. It was so off the wall. But he said, it's a death sentence. I said, you don't have to take that. What you taking that to? Huh? Uh-huh. I'm a good religious person. Huh? I, like Creflo Dollar, I hate religion. Because it's the doctrine of that church. I like the word, which is the truth of this one right here. Well, I told you when I left, I shook hands and I said, I said, in the name of Jesus, I call your stomach healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And I walked away. Or, but just before I said amen, I said, I said, do you agree? He said, yes. I said, amen. He's healed. Why? Because he that is in me is stronger than he that is in him. How do you like them apples? You see, I've got tithers' rights. You know the miracle about this thing is, too? Do you know your church here, this church, sends off more than 10% in tithes and offerings? Do you know that? Do you know you're not in debt because you're in this church? If you go to a church and they're in debt, you're in debt. And you so into that, you just went into debt. But I'm not in debt, but you are now. Kenneth Copeland stood up and asked people, and I shared a little bit of this on Sunday too, is to pray for church debt to be gone. Because they're literally putting the people 
in debt. That means you're in debt. That means you agree, and you're a member of that church now, so that means you don't get the overflow. But, but like they said, it's very important that you find out what kind of a church you get into. You better find out where they stand. Do they stand on tithers' rights? Do they stand? You know, and, and uh, um, you heard that on Sunday with Dennis Burke. He said that it's hard to find a good church. It's hard to find it. But once you find it, you don't let it go. Just because you get all ticked off at somebody or something or whatever, I don't really care. That's the first thing. Is this church debt free? Oh, no. But we've only got a few hundred thousand on it. Thank you. You may be preaching right, but you're living it wrong. Because it says, oh, no, man, nothing. You know, we are debt free. You are debt free. Maybe you're not in your personal, but your church is. So that means now you get an overflow until you are debt free. And you're going to become debt free faster because you're debt free in this church. Isn't that amazing? Oh, dear. It's like when Kenny and I got married, I had debt. He didn't. He married debt. That way, he should have thought about that. <laughs> I was worth it, he said. So the memory of the just is blessed. So now we're going to think on that. What is the greatest concern you have? You give that to God. Once you give it to God, you thank him for taking it, and then you just worship him. Why are some pe people blessed more than others? Did you ever think about that? This is things I had been thinking and thinking and praying on. Why are some people blessed more than others? They're using their faith, yeah. That's part of it. That's part of it. In fact, I, I think I heard Jesse Duplantis say this already. Obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Huh? Obedience. So, yeah, that is faith, Michelle. So you have faith in God, and if I'd ask you, would you go out there and, and uh, clean up the parking lot, and you do it, you got obedience, you get yourself a blessing. Oh, I love it. I love it. Mm, I love it. So now, uh, um, are we ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? You know how we know if we are? Because we will be afraid to minister to people. If we're ashamed of the word, like was Dennis Burke ashamed of the word? Do you think he looked foolish to people? Yeah. Are we afraid of the word? I, you know, you get to the point after, you don't care what people think about you anymore. You really don't care. If I see somebody problems, I know somebody that can help you. You do, yeah. Right here's my card. Have a good day. I go through so many of those yellow cards with a message on the back of If I'm at a, at a restaurant, I'm going to leave that card there. If there's other people with me, I'm going to give them the opportunity to get the blessing first, if it's one of you folks. But I'm going to give myself a double tip. Not 10, 12, 15%. I'm going to give a lot higher than that because that is going to get their attention. What? What? They give me that much? What's on this? Whoa. God's going to restore to you a hundredfold return for what you gave that tip. Did you know that? Oh. Oh. Now, um, God's going to use our hands and our feet, right? We're going to give it to him. We're going to remember because right there he said it. He said it in Psalms, uh, Proverbs 10, 7. He says, the memory of the just is blessed. So, when the devil comes along and sideswipes me, what am I going to do? I'm going to remember that God said he's going to take me through. He'll never leave me or forsake me. He's going to take me through, and I'm going to come out better on the other side. I might be miserable for a while, hmm? 
But every time we get stronger and stronger, like Dee Dee's getting stronger and stronger, and you guys, you're getting stronger and stronger. The devil can't keep you down anymore. Isn't that amazing? So now, what have we learned so far? We've learned that we have a line of Judah inside of us. Is that true? Okay, the face, the face of God. The heart of God is the Father. Remember that? The heart of God is the Father. That's the heart of God is the Father. He showed himself. Then the face of God is the Lord Jesus, right? Right? Okay, the voice of God is the Holy Spirit. And the hands of God is the church. So we're to reach out, we're to speak in confidence, just like that old roaring lion. Now, I, I got that into me. That's a while ago when I looked up on lion, a and, and long, long time ago. And I wanted to find out, and it's exactly like Bill, but I didn't know about the hippopotamus. But the lion is not the fastest animal. Who is the fastest? The cheetah is the fastest, right? Who is the biggest? The elephant. Who has the thickest skin? The hippopotamus. But then why in, think of this, why in the forest, when the lion roars, they all stop and listen? He's got the most what? He makes them way, so he's got the most confidence. He's got the most confidence. He's confident. So it's not, it's not how big you are. It's not how much money you have. It's none of that. It's how confident. He's making noise because he says, I know who I am. I've got confidence. And just that roar scares off a lot of predators. Do you realize that? When they hear that roar in the jungle, mm, Everybody stops and listens. So now we have a roaring lion inside of us. We've got the lion of Judah. I say you peel back your skin. Who is right underneath that skin, even in your fingers, even in your feet, even your head? Who is it? It's God. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is inside of you. Wow. Do you mean I've got his DNA? Mm hmm Do you mean I've got his blood? Mm hmm See, you've got to have perfect blood to be seated in heavenly places. Don't ever forget that. You've got perfect blood, don't you? Now, um, I want to save some time for some testimonies because I know you have testimonies. But, again, when... Um, w how, do I, how do I get my faith built up? How do I get my faith built up? What am I going to do? By hearing, the word of God. by hearing the word of God. Where do I find that? Romans ten seventeen. Faith comes out hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if I keep on speaking and speaking and speaking to myself, what do you think is going to happen? That's going to build my faith up. Mm -hmm. It's going to build my faith up, and I'm going to have more confidence. I'm going to make a louder noise at the devil. I can do that because I have the authority. You have the authority. It's time we take it back. If we have children and grandchildren, hey, even your neighbors that are, that are out of order, you can put them in order by what you say. You can do that in your home. You don't have to yell and scream. You just tell, you're going to sit there, you're going to sit there. Because Mama said it. They don't. There, we got some consequences. It wouldn't take long. And it works. So now you have, do you, no, no, I got to put it, do you have the confidence that he that is in you is stronger than he that's in your child, in your husband, in your wife, in your neighbor, in your boss? And do you really? Well, your boss, for instance, is going to come and start asking you questions of how to do things. Why? Because they're going to see the line of Judah in you. They're going to see the wisdom. They're going to see the revelation. They're going to see that you have the knowledge of somebody higher than they know. They're going to want to know what you have, and you're just going to tell them. 
because, and, and then also, yes, Lord, when you say, I bless you in Jesus' name, I bless you, 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 I bless you. I bless you. I, when I say that to you, that means now you have favor. Now I want to, you guys to watch how many people do things for you, how many people give you things, how many people open the door for you, how many people honor you, because blessed means you have favor everywhere that you go. And it's the favor of God, right? Because when you bless somebody, now the favor of God is on that person. Even your enemy is put to rest. You've got the favor. And then you go, I've really got it good. I've got tithers rights. God's got to rebuke the devil. If anybody gets in your way, anybody gets in your way, I got tithers rights. I just said, God, you're rebuking the devourer for my sake because that's what that means. That's it. Tithe means he'll rebuke the devourer every place I go. Going down the road. and When I was going home from church tonight, it was, boy, my car was blowing. I had the rendezvous, and it was blowing, you know, and I was just pulling, and I said, hey, knock it off in Jesus' name. And I was like, did that wind stop? It's got to. It's got to do whatever you tell it because you've got tithers' rights and you, God's got to rebuke the devourer and whatever Jesus spoke to, it had to listen. Same thing inside of you. Okay? So um, let's, let's just go to something real quick, though. Let's go to Psalms. Let's, no, I'll go to 103. Psalms 103. Let's, let's get a little teaching on prayer in here. Can we do that? When, when we pray, how do you pray? How do you want really meaningful prayer? Okay. This is what, I, well, this is what I've been doing for a bit. You know what I mean? I, 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 I pray because I ask for his wisdom and his revelation. I want the knowledge of him. I want the eyes of my understanding. Of him. I want that. I want it. So I'm going to get up and do that, Right. And I'm going to read my faith to faith. If you forget, if you read something else, go ahead and read something else. I don't care what you do. That's up to you. Okay? But then I give my day. Here, God, I give it to you, and I thank you for taking it. Everything I do will prosper. I have, I have favor. I have tithers rights. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Then I'll just use this one, for instance, because I've got this all marked up, and I've used this one a long time ago, but I'll just go back to it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start praying. I'm going to start making my day fruitful. So I'm going to do a little blessing. And if you look at, uh, in my Bible, it said the benefits of the Lord above that, a Psalm of David. Different ones like, is it Psalm 3? If you're having, uh, having problems in your life, Psalm 3 says confidence facing the enemy. Take that and start, well, okay, Lord. He said go back to that and that one. Okay. So, if you're having trouble with the devil, this is what you do. Sickness in your body, anything going on, money problems, in-law, outlaw, children problems, I don't care what it is. You can take that and you can go, Lord, okay, because you're having confidence in him. True? Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? See, he was singing this. David was singing this. Trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say, O oh my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. What does he want you to do when you see that word selah? He wants you to stop and meditate. He wants you to pause. He doesn't want you to keep on reading. He said, stop right there. What do you want me to do? He wants you to sing until you get the victory. Well, you're not going to get it right there and then. Okay, let's, let's just look at there. So here I get there and the enemy, I'm having a bad day. Um, there, there's a bill that came in and I'm thinking, oh, no. You know, young families have that or what else? Whatever. What are you going to do? You're going to stop and you're going to 
Oh, Father, I praise you and I worship you. Because you're going to edify yourself. In the prayer room, what I did, and the kids joined me, little Jaden and, and, and Sammy. I think little Hannah was in there for a little while. Uh, Sammy and Jaden, though. And I started singing, this little light of mine. Let's sing it. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it shine I always go on and I say don't let Satan blow it out I'm gonna let it shine don't let I get really hollering at home I just get moving it I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. One day I was singing, and I did a little of that. Uh, um, uh, God loves me, this I know, because the Bible tells me so. Sometimes you just don't know how to sing because you're down. Take any of those songs and just start singing them, right? They wanted, God's not dead. So we were singing that in the prayer room. God's not dead. Surely he's alive. What is it? You got a, a line on the inside, run on the outside, something like that. Oh, see, when, 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 um, when Joshua and them praised and worshiped, say they sounded loud, like the lion of Judah. What happened to the walls of Jericho? Foomp. They did not fall over. They sunk right into the ground. Now, of course, that was a wide because they raced their chariots on that wall. How could those big walls just go? I want to see that. I want a movie of that when I get to heaven. I want to see those walls sink right down in there. Would you like to see that? Oh, there's so much I want to see. I want to see Goliath and his head being cut off. And David standing and holding his head. I want to see it. Blood oozing down. Hey, that's a little gory, isn't it? I don't care. He had it coming. He was a giant. He was in the wrong place at the right time. So now, here you praise. So now you go on. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. I cry unto the Lord with my voice. And he heard me out of his holy hill. What word is there now in the King James? Selah. What does he want me to do again? He wants me to meditate. That means, what am I going to meditate on? I'm going to meditate on praising him. I'm going to meditate on singing. I'm going to, you know, when, when our kids are being naughty, why can't we just stop and say, let's read this together and let's praise? Why not? The greatest gift in the whole world was given to women. Do you realize that, Mary? Do you realize the greatest gift in the whole world? It, and then there was man. <laughs> we have the greatest gift because we get to bear those children. And, and if we're blessed, like I was blessed, that you can stay home and raise your kids, to me that was the most important thing. And I've told the girls this already, when, when it came time for the kids to go back to school, I went into depression. When the kids came time for them to come out of school, I was the happiest woman that ever lived because I got my kids at my side. We went to the parks. We were just, there was like four of us moving all the time, you know what I mean? Just three kids and myself. I loved, well, four kids and myself, Dee Dee. I loved it. Being the mother God has allowed us to be mothers of his children. A speaking spirit, the most important job in the whole world. A grandma, the most important job in the whole world. First the mother, then the grandmother, sorry. Look at that and just tell God, thank you, I thank you. Thank you that I get to be a mother and I get to teach my children. Thank you, Father. But here he's got sila. Pause and think. So here you're going to join me in tongues. Yes, yo 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. I worship you. I thank you. You're taking me through. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Any tongue that rises against me in judgment, I'll show to be in the wrong. How am I going to show whatever's happening that's bad that it's in the wrong? Because I'm going to say I've got tithers' rights, and I'm also going to speak the word, and I'm going to put an end to that trash that's hitting me. There. Then it goes on to say in verse 5, I lay me down and slept. I awoke. I awakened for the Lord what did he do? He sustained me. I, was, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against, against me round about. Arise, O Lord. Save me, O God, O my God. For thou hast w- did what? He sm- he's smitten all of my enemies upon the cheekbone thou hast what broken the teeth of the ungodly he's speaking what he wants to have done he's singing what he wants to have done to his enemy Hmm? enemy you get your hands off my kids you go back to hell where you belong then he says salvation belongs unto the lord thy blessing is upon the people selah Selah, how many times is he going Selah? One, two, three, just right. And that's when you're facing the enemy. You speak, you pray in the spirit, and then you turn around and you sing yourself a little song or turn on some music, something you really like. Hmm? I don't care if it's a Christmas song, but you're going to pause Pause, and you're going to keep on singing until you get. Got it? You may not feel that peace right away. You may, but David did. And the more you, you do that, the more you'll have understanding, just like in 103. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. I bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all of his benefits. Boy, how, how can you help but stop? And you just got to stop and praise him and pray in the spirit and do a little worshiping him and sing a song, whatever your song is. I don't care. Okay? Then, so you're praising him. You're, you're giving him the authority in your life. And remember, the Psalms, are. he starts out in so many of the Psalms, really his heart is heavy. And then he th- throws out what's ever in his heart out there, and then he praises God for taking care of it all. It's just that simple. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You have the comfort of the counselor that only a born-again Christian can have. You have the answer to everything that's going on in your house, at your job, hmm? in your whole entire family. How come my mom and dad wanted what I wanted, what I had? How come when ones would have questions, call me? Did I have the answer? It was in there. It was he that had the answer. The only thing I had to do was release it. How did I release it? I had the word that I could read. Did I know exactly where all the scripture was? No, because I got to pray in the spirit. And when you pray in the spirit, you were actually praying out of your spirit. And it's downloading back back onto your mind. And it will come out when you have need. So you, every one of you, have the answer to everything with your marriage, with your children, with your grandchildren, with your work, with your house problems. I don't care what it is. You have the answer. Or you know somebody, like if you need something fixed in the house, you'll know who to go to. You'll know exactly. Just spend some time asking him. You think? Yes. So is God good? Oh, I thought he was just good some of the time. All this time. In Psalms 3, 8, it says, Salvation belongs unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon the people. Selah. Selah means keep on singing until you get it. Know 100% that when you're praising and worshiping God, then you're not talking bad about the situation. But you don't know how awful my kids are. 
You don't know how mean they are. You don't know what dipsticks my, my neighbors are. You st Do you know when you speak over your children like that, you're, you're telling their angels to go and stir them up and make them meaner and make them want the ungodly things more? You all got that, didn't you? Mm -hmm. You all got that already. So now, that's why you want to watch what you say. Watch what you say. I got the best kids in the world. By the way, I tell everybody, even down there, we got the, I said, I got the best spiritual children in the whole world. I not only have the best children and grandchildren, but I got the best spiritual children in the whole world. And I had people agree with me. Because some of them, some of them knew you and you from a long time ago. They know. They know I've got the best. Mm hmm Got it? This one gal I know, she's, yeah, I tried to keep one of them here. And I said, no, you couldn't. She had to come back to Mama. That's just the way I roll. Right? Amen. Now, testimony time. Who has a testimony? You just go right ahead. Come on up. Who's got it? You got a testimony, Kenny? Uh, while we're getting ready, while we're getting ready for that, Dixie emailed this to me. Dixie and Jeff, they're sitting where it's warm. Yep, yep, yep. Dorn anointed praise and worship music today. We had a pair of eagles land in our cypress tree, and they, and they tweeter plattered or something, so guess we will get to enjoy the, well, anyway, so guess we will get to enjoy watching baby eagles in a few weeks. Okay, thank you, God, for this beautiful display of eagles, Dixie said, and they keep the same mate till death. The video was wow, stirs us up. That's the one we played on Sunday. Thanks for showing this. I'm going to look at it again this afternoon. It was so powerful and full of a wealth of message. Love you, Dixie. So they're watching every uh, Sunday and Wednesday night faithfully and just having fun and two years anniversary. <laughs> now they're still newlyweds. Okay, who has a testimony? Come on up. Don't let me hold you back. Now, I'm not going to give up because I know what's here. Just, I, uh, yeah, don't, don't hold on to me, girl. Get Can up I here. You, uh, yes, oh, yes, because I will be getting a different one because this is so big up here, and i got to be able to take it I down and off. I clear plastic ones are just so cool. I heard you were going to buy me one. Well, maybe I will, <laughs> if I have permission. Did you hear that? Are you giving me permission? She's going to, yes. Okay. I'll tell you what kind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. leaves... It, it leaves no guess. You can't hear? Closer. Closer? Turn up your bell tones. All right. We're, we're cooking. Yes. <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> you caught that. <laughs> okay. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So um, I have to figure out where to start with this. I've to unpack it a little bit. This is going to be obnoxious, I promise. Um, so you know that... Most of you have read this book or portions of this yes. book. Mikey was teaching on it. Uh -huh. And there was um, a chapter in here, chapter 10 and 11, that talked about basically the law, the law of attraction and the corridor principle, which in summary just means that when you step out in an area, then things start coming to you that you thought you had to wait for before you stepped out. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll just read you these three sentences. He says, if you've been waiting for money, the people and the resources to drop in your lap, but it never has happened and it never will happen. But once you step out, the law of attraction attaches to your faith, which then brings the people, the resources, and the ideas you need to accomplish it. And then he goes on to give some examples of how he um, wanted to buy some land and he didn't have any money to buy the land and he decided to just buy it. And then after that, the resources started coming in to give him zero financing and then he met a builder and then blah, 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 blah. Then mm -hmm. it became an investment property. And he gave a few more examples of where he thought he had to have this, all these things in place before he could step out, and he decided to just latch onto this principle of, I'm gonna step out and believe that everything's gonna line up. And mm -hmm. so that's a, what, how a lot of investors think, is they don't think they have to have success to do it, they just have the courage to step out with no guarantee of su success, and then they do it. So 
when Aaron and I were in um, Texas, we visited KCM for their Wednesday night service. And Terry Savell, which is Jerry's daughter, I think oldest daughter, Terry, um, she's the ghostwriter for all of his books. Mm -hmm. And so she's been under his teaching for her, her whole life. Mm -hmm. And um, she was um, teaching that night on her newest book. And her, it's called Dream It, Pin It, Live It. And so I just picked it up because I really enjoyed her message and I just wanted to get more of a fullness of what she was saying. And I've just been devouring this book. And I've, <laughs> I'm only in chapter four, so I get like two pages a day. <laughs> That's how much time I have to read. Um, but she talks about um, write the vision and make it plain. And without the vision, a vision, people perish. You know, those scriptures, we've all heard them before. But she talks about writing your visions down and then making a vision board and, you know, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I've just been working my way through this book. And at the end of each chapter, she gives you these action steps. And so I've just been following along and doing these action steps. Well, um, at the end of chapter two, she says, write a list of 100 things that you want to do before you die. <laughs> and so I thought, oh, that should be it's relatively take easy. take a little while. So I write and I write and I get to 20 and I'm like, okay, <laughs> now what? <laughs> and so it took me like a few days to keep working on this list. In fact, I'm only in the 60s, but <laughs> her, <laughs> her point is just to show you that once you get past all the things that you know are in your heart, at least this is what God's showing me. She didn't write this in her book, but is that now, you're, now I'm at a place where I need to seek the Lord to find out what else is in there or what else his visions are for me because I was just limited in my own vision, I guess is what I'm saying. So, so w working on this list has really stirred me up in a lot of areas. Things that, you know, I've dreamt of or thought of, but then I was just, you know, I'd talk myself out of it, like, oh, I can't do that, or that's going to take too long, or I don't have the finances <laughs> for that, or whatever. There's always an excuse that you can't step out in this, in an area. Sorry, I'm talking really fast, and I'm losing my breath. There's a baby, and I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay, so long story short, I was at the Y today, and um, so one of the things on my list was really standing out to me, and so it's something that I've been meditating on for two or three years, something I've been working at in my free time, but not really focusing a lot of attention on, just because, you know, life is kind of crazy, and so I was at the Y, and um, this dude was talking on his cell phone about um, this app that he's creating for some clients. And I'm totally e eavesdropping on this conversation, not intentionally, but I'm just sitting right next to him and I can hear him talking on the phone. And then the Holy Spirit quickened my mind to this project that I've been working on and that down the road it's going to need an app. Like I need an app developer in order to make this be um, marketable. Mm -hmm. And so, so I'm like, I wonder if this is what this concept was talking about. Oh, I didn't read you this part. Okay, so I told you the part in, in this billionaire book about the law of attraction. So in, I don't know, whatever, three, chapter three of this book, it's actually a scientific principle. And this was really exciting to me and I just want to share it to you. It's um, called a RAS filter. It means reticular activating system. Every one of us has what is called a RAS filter. This filter is used to sift through all the sensory inputs we are exposed to all day. We would probably go a little crazy if we weren't able to weed out some of the <laughs> <laughs> some of the stimuli, stimuli, stimuli coming at us on any given day. This RAS filter is most easily explained this way. If you are in a room full of 100 people talking and someone says your name through a crowd of noise, you hear it. That's your RAS filter sifting through the noise to focus on something you're looking for. Oh, okay. Good. When you get clear about your goals, you give instruction to your RAS filter to start looking for the ideas, the opportunities, the resources, and the relationships that line up with your personal goals. You start recognizing these things that are being attracted to you. <laughs> so mm. when I read that, I connected it back to what he was talking about. I'm like, oh, that's really real. Like, when you have things that you're actively meditating on, yeah. then your mind will pick those things out. Okay, so at the Y, I'm sitting, I'm hearing this guy talking about an app on the phone to this other person, and so then I go back to my seat and I'm thinking, should I approach this guy? Because I was totally yeah. eavesdropping, and like, how do you just walk up to somebody and be like, so I heard you on the phone, I you were talking about it. an app, and you know, can I ask you about that? So I spent like the next hour <laughs> trying to psych myself up to go and like talk to this guy, <laughs> because I thought it was so weird. Like if I was talking on the phone to somebody, and then somebody came up to me and said, I heard you on your phone, I'd be like, why are you listening to me <laughs> on the phone? So. He was sitting next to you. What the heck? <laughs> anyway, on the way out, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do it. I just built up the courage. And what is he going to do? Like, whatever. I have a little kid. I'm not, like, trying to stalk you. 
So I went over there and I just said, hi, my name is Allie and I'm working on this project and I heard you talking on your phone, sorry I wasn't trying to eavesdrop, but whatever. Um, do, you know, are you an app developer? And he said, yes. And I'm like, are you local? He's from this, he went to school in Oshkosh, he's from around this area. Because I have researched app developers before, but they're like in California or whatever. And it's so nice to have somebody local that you can go face to face, wow. talk to them. So long story short, he gave me his information and so when I get to that point, now it's really scary because I have to like actually start working on this project actively, which is like overwhelming. But anyway, that's my long, long testimony to just tell you that these concepts are true. And so I encourage you to um, write your own list of 100 things and then see what God pulls out as your like the next year goals mm -hmm. and then start hearing what comes out at you because it works. Good, good. <laughs> that's my mini sermon for the evening. <laughs> I think, uh, why don't you show that book once more, Allie, 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 Allie. Show the book once more by Terry. That, that one will build your faith up. Okay, bring that one up too, sweetie. That will build your faith up. You know what another good one is? Supernatural childbirth. There is so much faith in that little book and in these here. Excellent. And Allie was telling me about this the other day. You know, and what we have to do would we could order these so if somebody would want you know do you know how much this was Allie? Uh, ten bucks sixteen ninety nine ten bucks it's ter terry savell that that wrote it jerry savell's daughter so if anybody would like to get it give that to Dee, Dee but pay her ten dollars down because otherwise if the book comes in and you say i changed my mind then guess what? You don't get your 10 back. Why don't we ask him to see what it costs? Yep. And then we'll order it. Then we have these items all in mind. Then we can mark down the things that we You know what? That's a good idea, too. But, but, we, we, can, but we want it paid before because we don't want them sitting, sitting, sitting on the shelf, right? And tomorrow morning we can talk a little bit about that, okay? So, anybody else? Nobody else? Good. Well, what we're going to do tomorrow morning is we're going to follow a little bit more on this line of developing, of developing our faith and how to speak when you, get, when you hit the wall and things like this. We're going to go a little bit deeper into that and show how we're ten times smarter and our children are ten times smarter and then we are going to also agree together in prayer for children that are wayward or whatever. And I'm going to tell you this right now. God's guaranteed us that child will be free or children. They're free. They're free. They're free. Because we women are going to start praying, and we're going to pray the paint off the wall. We'll have to repaint it back there. But we can handle it. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take communion, ushers, but we're also going to take our spoils. So this is an opportunity. Nobody else had a testimony, true? Nobody? Okay, all right. I knew there was something good. I just had to wait. So now, remember, first of all, you turn your spoils. And you want to put that right up here, Deed? Where did you put one of those? Put it right up here, sweetheart. Put it right up here. Corey, you see you. You know... You know, when we were at uh, the minister's conference, they don't have offering time or anything like that because they're trying to bless us. But you know what? You can take just so much of that, and all of a sudden, one point, I said to Ken, Pastor Kenny, you need to get something up on those steps, and he right up there. Another time, I was like, here is another opportunity to sow. So... The, and there was dancing and stuff going on, so I gave the money to the usher, and I said, would you put that up on the steps for me? I didn't want to lose what was going on, okay? Because I want blessings. So now, this is your opportunity for your blessings. What do you have need of? Take it by faith, because you're giving yourself now, God's got to say to you, this is what he says, he says, what do you want? What do you want? Then you just tell them what you want. So come and give. And then what we'll do is we'll take communion, okay? 
just like Abraham and Melchizedek. You were Abraham, I'm pretending I'm Melchizedek. I get into these things. I got it. I got it. I actually got it. So now you've got your, your communion. You've got the bread. Melchizedek had the bread and the wine, and that was, that was Jesus to give himself and all of those 8,000 promises. So now when you take this communion, receive whatever you have need of. Receive it because remember, remember, it's up there in heaven and it's all laid out. The only thing you have to do is just reach up there with your words and take it. What do you have need of? Is it healing? Is it prosperity? Is it peace? Is it joy? Is it to get along better with other people? Is it whatever it is? Take it by faith right now in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Let's eat. And now as we drink this, we are saying we have a covenant with that covenant. We have a need and we receive that. And his blood is running in our veins. Because if your blood wasn't perfect, you couldn't be seated in heaven. Can't go there. Because he purified your blood. Okay? Also, he took care of every body problem that you have, every situation. And we thank you for restoration. Do you receive it? In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I set myself in agreement, and I bless the spoils in Jesus' name. Now, that means that you have favor. That means this is rebuking the devourer. It's yours in Jesus' name. Do you agree? Yes. Now, Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity to come together. You're so faithful to us. Thank you, Father God, that we go home safely, no problems with roads in Jesus' name. And Father God, as we meet here tomorrow morning, the ladies, first of all, having the study that we just bless. And Father God, I know it already. There are miracles there waiting for us tomorrow morning just to take them by faith because you get women together and you get them praying, saying, you better just hike it out of here because you're in so much trouble in Jesus' name. And I thank you for that. And I bless the ladies, Father God, as they take down all these trimmings, all these beautiful things. And I thank you that we have the opportunity to celebrate you in Jesus' name. Now, every one of you are blessed in Jesus' name. Go forth and receive that favor in everything you put your hand to in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Can you have a little music? I can see the waters raging at my feet. I can.